Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, today I thought I'd take a little bit of time and teach you guys one of my favorite, if not my favorite, card uh, controls. So this is the Allerton control. Uh, my take really isn't that different from just the normal control, but I didn't see it uh, out there a lot on YouTube. It was just <laughs> one day I was diving through the archives, if you will, of YouTube and I kind of stumbled upon it. So great control. Um, and before I teach it to you, uh, here's a really quick performance of the control. All right, so you start off with a fully shuffled deck of cards. So there's no setup or anything. Um, you can have the audience shuffle the deck of cards. And then you tell them that, uh, you tell them just to point to uh, any card in the deck that they want and you'll show it to them. So you start spreading through, they point to a card, let's just say, let's just say this one right here, right? And you show it to them, you say, all right, eight of spades. They remember the card, right? And you place their card in the middle of the deck, just like that. All right, you let them push it in, score up the deck, and just like that, their card is on top. All right, so that was the performance of the Allerton control, and now let's get right into learning it. Yeah, so for this, you literally just need a deck of cards. Um, I think a slightly newer deck in terms of the finish being smooth would be preferable, but it's not, it's not necessary. Um, like as long as you can slide a card around like this on top of the deck without any issues, you'll be fine. So the basic mechanics behind it is you're going through the deck, right? The audience points to a card, right? And you find it. And what's happening is you kind of have the card spread a bit like this. Underneath, you're holding the card next to it. And as you show it, you're bringing this card back. So you're showing the second card. So you do that type of motion. So when you show it, the card that they see is this card here and then you maintain the position of that card. So go ahead and spread and get into a position like this, right? And there should be maybe four cards, including the top one. So what you don't want is this sort of thing, because if you do that, it's a lot more obvious. I mean, you could do it, but if there's any anything off, like if this card, doesn't come off completely straight. It'll look like that, and that looks really bad. Whereas if you have more cards spread out, so let's just say four or five, and there's a, a little thing sticking up a little bit, I mean, it's not as noticeable. So it's not a big difference, but it's enough of a difference that I'd say try to go for a smaller spacing between the cards, but more cards there, right? Now you're going to want to have your pinky at the bottom. So as you spread, just keep your pinky at the bottom. Um, also, just as a side note, it does make your spreading nicer if your pinky is at the bottom. So small tip. Anyways, so spread out to the point they touch a card and just grab it like that. If they point to a card over here, just keep spreading and then grab it. So you have this nice little I don't know what to call this. this, this nice little setup here, all right? So the hand positioning is pinky there, thumb here, and on the back you have your fourth finger and your third finger, fourth finger and third finger on this card, contacting the eight of diamonds, right? And your index finger is just resting here. So it looks kind of like that, I'll give you a second. So thumb on the back of the top card, these two on the back of this card, pinky on the bottom. And first just practice the motion of bringing your thumb back and letting the card slide on your pinky finger. So letting it slide like that. So optimally you want the card to slide perfectly flat, just like that. So when you raise it, you don't see the card on top. Now it's, n it's not always gonna be perfect, but just work on it so it's more like that and less like that, right? Not a pivot, more of a, more of a slide. So from there, from that position, you're going to take it like this, 
and point to it. And as you raise it, right about eye level, right before eye level, you start pulling. And you want this card to be fully behind the second card by the time you pass this sort of eye level. Because if you're here and they see that, it's it may seem subtle at first, but a lot of vision is motion based. Um, so if, for instance, if I do this and I say look at that, and then you see that, it's obvious that something's something's going on, even if it's just a corner. So you want to bring it up, start bringing it back. You can bring it back a little bit early, like this isn't too big a deal. But just make sure the card is fully back by the time you bring it up past eye level. So you bring it up, work on timing. Again, this, this kind of takes a bit of practice. Um, you might want to practice with the mirror, practice with, you know, whoever's nearby performing, that you perform magic to. Just practice a bit with it and kind of figure out the timing of it. Um, again, it's not very angle sensitive, it's just timing sensitive. So when you're here, it, as long as there's not somebody standing here, uh, you know, it's really not angle sensitive, but it's timing sensitive in terms of you need to time that pretty well. So you bring it up, <laughs> I think I think I kind of flashed, but all right, you bring it up, right? And you start pulling it in, you pull it all the way in, right? Pull it all the way in, show two of spades. They memorize it, you know, you have your patter, you talk about whatever, they memorize it. Then on the way down, you just reverse the process and you bring it back. Little tip on this is if you keep it all the way smooth like that and place it here, it seems a little sus. Here, I'll show you. If I do this and I say, right, look at the card, and then I go like that, it seems a bit like there's a bit of a continued motion. So instead, uh, I recommend doing something like this, right? You bring it up, that's a bit slow, sorry. <laughs> you bring it up, right? And you're like three of clubs. And then as you bring it down, you bring it out, then you stop. And then you bring it out some more. So it's, it's sort of this sporadic movement. So you go from here, to there, to there, right? So you push it out, you keep pushing, then you stop, and then you push some more and place it in this sort of spread thing. Yeah. Quick side note, sorry if I'm flashing a little bit on the way up, but just the way that my camera setup is, is you guys can probably see the little edge there as I pull it back. So just don't mind me, <laughs> but uh, that, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to bring it up and show it. And then as you come back down, push it out, then stop. And then you, you already have this sort of spread going in your right hand. So just place it into the middle of that, reach over with your thumb and open up the deck. Again, this shouldn't be too hard. Just reach over with your thumb, pop it open slide this in the middle of it, close it up. And I like to let the audience push it in because you know mentally it makes makes it feel like they they actually push their card in, even though it's not. So again, a little bit of time misdirection. So they push their card in and you're good to go. So one last time all the way through, you go through the deck, they point to a card, you say this one, you show it, right? Jack of clubs. And then you bring the card back down, place it in there, place it in there. You ask them to push the card in for you, they do so. Score up the deck, and you're ready to go into whatever you want. All right guys, so that was the tutorial. Um, some other things I would like to add is that if you notice the timing with this is kind of difficult to time this right here. So if you want to fix that, one way to do that is if they're on this side of you, right? So if you're kind of turning like this, you can kind of use your body language to turn a bit and then do the action this way. And that kind of wrist rotation hides a lot of the card movement on top. So that, that's just another way to do it. Uh, also, I do have a couple of videos uh, kind of planned that I want to film. 
upcoming, so stay tuned for those. They will probably take a bit longer to film, so your patience would be very much appreciated. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, it'd mean a lot to me. <laughs> and uh, for everybody, just stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.